Okay, we have another integral from the MIT integration B2025, number 14. We have the integral of secant to the fourth x minus tan to the fourth x dx. Okay, to get started with it, the only trouble we have is it's a little awkward dealing with the fourth power just because we'd have to reduce it and I think we have to do it multiple times. Well, what we can do instead though is use difference of two squares on this. I can rewrite it as, if we look at it as secant squared squared and tan squared squared, I can write this as secant squared of x plus tan squared of x. And then I can multiply it by secant squared x minus tan squared of x. Then over here, we can use the identity that secant squared x is the same thing as tan squared x plus one. But when you plug that in, the tan squareds are gonna cancel and we're just left with one. So if we're just multiplying by one, this whole part here can be ignored. But then here on what's left, I wanna use this same thing, just rearranged a different way. If tan squared x plus one is secant squared, then I can say tan squared x is the same thing as secant squared x minus one. So, so adding this to this, what we're left with is gonna be two secant squared x minus one dx. But we can just go ahead and integrate this. Integral of secant squared is just gonna be tangents. So this is gonna be tan, sorry, two tan x minus x, add a plus c, and that's it. Wow, so that one was so quick, I only had to use two lines. Maybe I should do one more. I can group 14 and 15. Let's do 15 really quick. I did one, two, and three, so I might as well start grouping some of these. It's just hard to do like a 20 second video. So let's do number 15. So here we've got the integral from zero to one, square root of x times one minus x. I think there's a couple of different ways. I think you could probably complete the square. What I wanna do instead is let's actually just rewrite it and split it up, just kind of write it differently. So I'm gonna write this as x to the one half times one minus x to the one half. And really what I wanna do is write these exponents like three halves minus one and the same thing over here, three halves minus one. And then what we notice is it's perfectly set up to use the beta function on it where the inputs are gonna be here and here. Let's just look at the formula for the beta function really quick. So using this, we have everything we need. We've got our Z1 and our Z2 here and here. So what we're left with is gonna be this thing, gamma three halves times gamma three halves. And then we just need to add them and get gamma three. But now there's a few formulas we can use just to reduce this thing. So I guess let's start with the numerator. So for gamma three halves, we have this formula over here to reduce it. So for gamma three halves, we can just reduce this by one because it's got the same property as the factorial as we'll see in a second. But so using this, we reduce this by one, we get one half gamma one half. But then we can go to this formula and, and just to save time, I like to memorize this value. Gamma one half is square root of pi. So what we get here is square root of pi over two. So putting this numerator together, we get square root of pi over two, but we've got two of them, so this is gonna be squared. And then for gamma of three, we can come down and use this first formula, reduce it by one, take the factorial. So this is gonna be the same thing as two factorial. But square this out, we just get pi over four, two factorial is just two, so we divide it into two, and for my final solution, we just get pi over eight. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.